easy access to hand washing should be available gloves urinary catheters syringes needles iv tubing suture materials antiseptic solutions like iodoform or chlorhexidine spirit 70% alcohol swabs cotton swabs should be available bleach clean uh, chlorine based compound clean uh, sheet to pl uh, to place under the mo mother sanitary pads after delivery uh, clean towels for drying and wrapping the baby coat ties blanket for baby baby feeding cup impregnated uh, bed net etc partograph medical the medical records will include a partograph labor record and a uh, register so next we will see the icu infrastructure the so icu is the highly specialized and sophisticated area of the hospital which is specifically designed and staffed located furnished and equipped dedicated to the management of critically sick patients with injuries or any other complications so, uh, so we will look at the recommendations here in initial planning what you have to see is a team leader is formed a coordinator is there to plan the icu structure data is collected like how based on the population you are rendering your services according to that you have to plan the icu beds uh, beginning of the proce process and decide about the budget allocation how how costly it would be what are the aims and objectives of the department you are supposed to make then decision about the icu level should be uh, will it be a level one level two or level three or a tertiary icu unit the number of beds depending upon the level of the icu designing where the nursing station should be uh, etc will come under the decision about icu level central nursing uh, station location space how how many nurses it should accommodate for at at one time will be noted here in equipment uh, what all equipments will be there the number of ventilators uh, ventilator beds the number of monitors uh, the number of uh, monitors in icu versus hdu uh, collecting information systems about various equipments available with specification etc should be mentioned uh, support system recommendation like the storage communication computerization meeting the needs of the nursing and uh, nurses and doctors uh, relatives and attenders do they have a sitting seating arrangement relatives and attenders so that is the support system recommendation environmental planning uh, so that can, to control the nosocomial infection healthcare aquatic infection the floor walls lightning ceiling uh, the furnitures noise control surroundings uh, heat hepa filtration if required heat ac ventilation what it should be uh, such protocols will be set uh, in human resource uh, development how many doctors should be there how many nurses are should be arranged for this particular icu respiratory therapist computer programmer anm gnm staffs clerks uh, the x-ray technicians lab technicians cleaning staff housekeeping staff etc who need to be trained to be an icu staff etc should be planned uh, research uh, other areas like research data collection documentation record, record keeping is come along, will also come into play while uh, the inf uh, ic infrastructure process icu team will consist of intensivist administrator a finance officer architect engineer nurse and other relevant members this is the, they form the icu team before the construction different levels of icu there are three different levels of icu level 1 uh, level 2 and level 3 small district hospital small private hospital um, nurse, uh, nursing home becomes the level level 1 um, icu they will only have around 6 to 8 beds uh, resuscitation is done here short term cardio respiratory support is given defibrillators are available abg blood group analysis is done ventilation is done for only for 24 to 48 hours after that you may have to transfer the patient non invasive monitoring is done in level 1 icu safe start transfer arrangements are there they have ambulance services uh, wheelchairs trolleys uh, etc Uh, the staff should should do short training courses uh, like bls basic life support courses etc um, in charge is a trained doctor a physician and blood bank support is there from outside they will have a basic clinical clinical laboratory within the hospital critical care medicine book will be maintained when it comes to level 2 hospital they are larger uh, general hospitals they will have at least 6 to 12 beds and director will be a trained qualified intensivist multi system life support uh, is provided in level 2 um, hospital if it is a multi system failure in level 2 care can be given invasive as well as non invasive treatments are provided in level 2 ventilation is available for more than 48 hours invasive monitoring is done here 
long term ventilation is also uh, available uh, pacemaker uh, uh, checking the pacemaking is also available and access to abg electrolytes um, other routine diagnostic support etc is done they have their own designated microbiological lab within the hospital nurses and, and uh, doctors are trained in critical care management they have their own ct and mri setup within the hospital sometimes they may have research department also it's not compulsory cardiology department is there as a separate department hd facility is desirable but not compulsory blood bank will be either their own or they may outsource to other uh, third party blood banks in level 3 hospital it is recommended for all the tertiary level hospitals the bed strength will be from 10 to 16 with more one or more multiple icus like cicu pcu nicu burns icu micu sicu etc recent invasive and uh, non invasive monitoring is done uh, long term care is given in level 3 icu intra and inter hospital facilities is provided here um, from uh, within the hospital they may take the take up the patient in level 3 or from other hospitals also they get the referral to level 3 multi system care is also provided here multi system failure can be treated here fellowship courses are conducted here they teach also and they certify their nurses also um, bedside x ray uh, ultrasonogram bronchoscopy dialysis is also provided again they will have their own ct and mri department blood bank support is there they they will have their own blood bank within the hospital one is to one would be the nurse patient ratio in level 3 hospital national and international research provisions are also available in all the tertiary level 3 host icus minimum 100 square feet patient area should be given for one patient an ethical committee's assistant is also provided because a research department is uh, available for the support human resources for the icu um team leader who will spend more than 50% of its time in icu there are resident doctors post graduate at least minimum one resident post graduate assistant doctor for five patients nursing staff one is to one for ventilated um, for ventilated patients one is to two or one is to three for less serious patients respiratory therapist will be provided physiotherapist are there on call it personnel biomedical engineers on call nutritionist on call and housekeeping uh, staff especially for the icu department icu beds one is to four uh, one to four icu beds per 100 hospital beds is ideal if it is more than six icu beds it is not cost effective Uh, it will not bring in enough profit if it more than 24 icu beds are available in a hospital it, they are difficult to manage efficiency is compromised after you increase the bed size from 12 beds up to 12 beds efficiency is not that compromised so the ideal range you have for the nicu is 8 to 12 beds icu uh, space uh, space like Uh, it should be 125 to 150 square feet per bed uh, especially in level 3 hospitals and then uh, 100 to 150 percent extra space should be there to accommodate the nursing station storage movement area uh, equipment area doctors room toilet etc everything should compromise around 150 percentage extra of the uh, of the space allocated for the patients a uh, minimum one bigger room for bedside um, procedure should be provided 10% of the room are designated isolation room uh, isolation rooms with 20% extra space than the other room if uh, if uh, you have around uh, 10 beds in icu at least one bed should be an isolated an isolation room with all the facilities of the icu and the space that i that isolation room should have should be 20% extra than the other icu beds partition between the patients uh, should be fixed or removable uh height of the monitoring system it can either be a pendant monitoring uh, system or a headed panel in pendant monitoring system uh, it will be in the center of the icu uh, icu it will be hanging in center of the icu head and panel system means at the head end of the patient all the monitors will be placed uh, the a uh, monitoring system should be always above eye level but at a comfortable height that will prevent neck discomfort for the doctors and nurses who are continuously watching the monitoring the vitals so keep each bed at least 2 feet away from the wall 
provision of respiratory uh, technique should be available. Isolation rooms, one or two rooms exclusively for isolation cases should be provided. Um, central nursing, uh, nursing station, uh, it should be uh, central nursing station. So it's a nerve center of the ICU and uh, near uh, all and near all monitors, it should be equidistant to all the patient beds and it, uh, all the patients should be observable from the nursing station either directly or through central monitoring system. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it can either be in L or U fashion. Um, it serves, uh, serves up to six to 12 beds from the central nursing station. Heat, heating, ventilation, and air, air conditioning system. I see should be fully uh, air conditioned. Um, and if it is not air conditioned, at least you should have tilt and turned windows. Safe air quality uh, from clean to dirty area should be the moment of air. Minimum six air changes per room per hour should take place. Two air changes can be composed of the outside air, but within one hour, six air changes should take place within the ICU. Uh, dirty utility, uh, sluice area and laboratory area, five air changes per hour is, is adequate. Uh, air filter, filtered should be 99% efficacy down to five microns. It should be a no smoking zone. Heating is to comfort the pa patient only, not to control the temperature. Uh, 16 to 25 degrees is the ideal degree Celsius. Uh, is the ideal temperature for an ICU for its proper functioning. Power backup system should be available. Negative pressure isolation room, the organisms that spread via airborne or droplet nuclei, uh, those patients should be put in negative pressure isolation room. Windows should not be open. Uh, exhaust fan is greater than the supply of air. Pressure differential is 2.5 PA. The air movement is from clean to dirty is the airflow. Uh, the air from the room, uh, preferably exhausted outside, is recirculated through the HEPA after being filtered out, uh, after exposing it to the filtration, radiation, etc. It can uh, be recirculated into the room through HEPA filtration. So this is a negative pressure isolation room. Passive airflow, there is a negative pressure within the room and air is forced out, outside. Uh, and this is done to prevent the outside environment from getting the infection carrying, carried by the patient admitted in negative pressure isolation room. Positive pressure isolation room, protection for the patient at high risk of, risk of infection. Room should have greater supply, uh, greater air supply than exhaust air, but it is opposite in negative pressure. Pressure differential is between 2.5 to 8 PA. HEPA filtration is required uh, if the air is returned. This is the... Uh, a positive pressure isolation here air is forced in and this air can go out within the hospital passive airflow is done but here air is forced in filtered air is forced in lighting in the room natural light is, uh, is, is preferred synthetic artificial daylight can be uh, can be installed for night workers so that the circadian rhythm is not affected uh, for procedures, high illumination and sports lighting should be there, descending from the ceiling and extending from the wall or carried into the room. So, and these lighting should be shadow free spot lighting with at least the uh, 150 foot candles should be the strength of the illumination lighting. For general patient care, the, uh, the room should be bright enough for vision without any eye strain. Overhead lighting should be at least 20 foot uh, candles, not more than that. Fluorescent lights are coated with phosphorus lamp for assessment of the skin. Such lamps can be used. Noise control in the ICU. The noise level is under 40 um, A weighted decibels in a, a decibels in a day and um, um, for a 40, 40 air weighted decibels in the evening and 20 air weighted decibels in the night. So noise level monitors are available in some ICU. Uh, so that can be installed. If the noise is uh, going beyond the given A-weighted disciples, noise control should be carried out. In high dependency uh, unit, patient care level is intermittent between ICU and floors located near the ICU complex or within. Uh, so staff competency is similar to ICU. 
fifty percent of the main ICU should be the staff appointed in the HDU. Doctor nurse patient ratio can be relaxed as compared to the ICU. One out of three beds may be used as a palliative care. In high dependency unit, you do not have to worry much, and you don't, you don't, you do not require critical monitoring as required in ICU. It can be bit relaxed in high dependency unit. Following type of patients can be kept in HDU. The patient who are who have recovered from a critical uh, illness. who are admitted in icu but after recovery instead of sending them into general wards they can, they will be kept in hdu for some time and then will be transferred to the other wards or discharged patients who are less sick uh, like single organ failure those patients can be kept in high hdu and patients who require strong observation they can be but they do not require critical monitoring only strong observation those can be kept in hdu